Hello again YouTube, it is me Arielle back with another video and today we are again talking about herbs. We are talking about a special class of herbs called tonic herbs or adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic herbs heal your body from chronic stress from excess cortisol production. Adaptogens are traditionally known as tonic herbs and here are some fun images of tonic herbal formulas from the Americas, but these are not what I'm talking about. Chronic stress can age the body rapidly and really deplete all of the body's organs, especially the thyroid and the adrenal cortex. Adaptogenic herbs have a balancing and normalizing effect on these tissues, especially these organs, and they are universally non-toxic and good for your whole body. They are nourishing to your body's tissues and help balance your body's stress response. I am going to use the words tonic and adaptogen interchangeably. Adaptogen is the more kind of modern scientific term because it helps your body adapt to chronic stress. Now, as we probably know, hopefully, a little bit of stress is good. It keeps us like achieving our goals in life and responding to normal environmental and social things. Chronic stress is something that affects so many of us all of the time, especially in this day and age, blah, 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 everything that has been going on. So we are all tired and wired and exhausted and burned out and have compassion fatigue. And so we would really benefit from tonic herbs, from adaptogenic herbs, and just from like a decade's worth of sleep if we're being completely honest. A quick reminder, none of this is medical advice. This is just me, a folk herbalist, providing you with information so that you can be like empowered to make your life better and make your own medicine, should you choose to do that. Our first herb that we are going to talk about is ashwagandha. It is an Ayurvedic herb, which means that it comes from ancient India, and it has been known about for probably at least 5,000 years. Withania somniferum is the Latin name of ashwagandha, and it literally means, allegedly, horse smell. Because I guess when they dig up the ashwagandha plant out of the ground, it smells kind of like a horse. Ashwagandha is in the nightshade family, so if you know you have a sensitivity to nightshade family plants, like tomatoes or peppers or eggplant or whatever, steer clear of ashwagandha for everybody else, it may be a really good option for you. Ashwagandha in particular is balancing to thyroid conditions. In addition to helping the body's stress response, ashwagandha is really beneficial for bodybuilders and anybody who exercises and wants to put on muscle. It is anabolic, meaning that it will actually aid your body in putting on these guns. Wow, I'm so cringe. And it will aid muscle recovery it has an affinity for the gastrointestinal tract, helping heal chronic sores and prevent ulcers and all manner of digestive issues. It also helps promote healthy weight and healthy weight loss, I think because of a blood sugar balancing and appetite balancing property it has. Ashwagandha is a nootropic herb, which means that it makes you more smarter. It improves cognitive abilities when used over time. And it also is really calming in that it promotes GABA production in your brain. And GABA, G-A-B-A, is an amino acid that your body makes to calm itself down and recover from stress, basically. There have also been a lot of anecdotal stories throughout the ages of ashwagandha helping with people's libidos, as a lot of tonic herbs do, and with regrowing hair. And ashwagandha is said to increase the pitta, the fire energy. And so it helps our metabolism, our hormonal system, and it just helps us have strength and endurance. And that is ashwagandha, the Indian ginseng. Which brings me to actual ginseng. Ginseng is arguably the most famous adaptogen, tonic herb, and maybe even one of the most famous herbs, if not the most famous herb in the world. True ginseng goes by the name of Panax ginseng. Panax is Latin for panacea, 
which means cure-all, and thusly, ginseng has been known as a cure-all throughout both the Eastern world and the Western world because the Americas have their own form of ginseng. So let's talk about Chinese ginseng first, and that is what I am drinking today. Panex ginseng is what they call in China Bai Renshen. Bai Renshen is unprocessed dried ginseng root, and it looks kind of like a human. Because it looks kind of like a human, ginseng's name, Renshen, means man root. Bai Renshen is the unprocessed ginseng, and it is best when it is harvested when it is past seven years old. This tea I am drinking right now is most likely harvested from younger ginsengs because profit and easier to grow when you harvest them at younger ages, but it won't have like the full therapeutic potential of a really old ginseng root. And ginseng roots are some of the most valuable and prized possessions people can have, especially if they're upwards of 50 or 100 years. It can be as much as like a fancy truffle or a bottle of fine wine. It can go for hundreds and thousands of dollars. It's crazy. I think there was a Jackie Chan movie about this. In the system of herbalism that I was trained in, the Chinese herbal system, all herbs have temperature properties. They can make the body warmer or cooler. And ginseng has warming properties. Ginseng also is said to boost the chi of the lungs, the spleen and the stomach and digestive organs and our original life force qi called yuan qi. It really fortifies our energy on both a physical and a spiritual level, if you're willing to be open to those ideas, I guess. Ginseng contains hormone-like substances called ginsenocides that, because they are so similar to our hormones that we produce, they help our body produce more hormones. What makes ginseng such a powerful medicine for athletes who want to increase their endurance for treating heart disease and cancer like they do in China regularly. These ginsenocides have even been shown to raise the amount of helper T cells and boost our immune system, helping us deal with all sorts of infections, both viral and bacterial and fungal. Like ashwagandha, ginseng is a nootropic, meaning that it boosts our mental acuity and makes us smarter. Chinese ginseng is processed in two different ways. The first way that I just described, it's just dried and made into tea. The second way is it is super steamed, super heated, and that changes the texture of it and it awakens more of these ginsenoside molecules in it and makes it have way more heating properties, more energy boosting potential. And we call it Hong Renshen or Red Renshen because literally when this Bai Renshen, White Renshen is steamed, then it turns red. Hong Renshen is for people who are very cold and exhausted, and so it is not appropriate for people with excess conditions like hypertension and diabetes. We're going to switch gears and talk about American ginseng, which is in the same genus as Panax ginseng, but it has a different species, and that is called Panax chinkafolius, quinquafolius. It means five-leaved ginseng and that is native to America in the Appalachian Mountains, the oldest mountain range in the world, arguably, and its natural range was from all the way in North Canada to Florida. And so you're gonna find ginseng in the Eastern United States in special like west-facing woodland environments, and it is pretty rare nowadays because it is over-harvested. And that is so sad, guys. We have harvested all of our ginseng before letting it go to seed. And so, like any other endangered species, it has a limited ability to reproduce and it takes so long for this ginseng to grow up that we're running out of it. So there is a bit of an ethical issue in using American ginseng, but I personally still use it occasionally when I'm feeling really tired because it, it's really strengthening like no other medicine and it's less heating than Chinese ginseng. It is an incredibly valuable medicine, and that's why it's so popular and over-harvested. And ginseng does everything that Chinese ginseng does, but is just a little more cool and moistening. And so, depending on what your individual body is like, it may prefer Chinese ginseng or American ginseng. 
Like all herbal medicines, you kind of just have to very carefully experiment and see what your body likes and what works for you. And now we are going to talk about Siberian ginseng, which I am going to just call Eleuthero because it is not a true ginseng. It is, however, in the same family that ginseng and American ginseng are in. It is in the Aureliaceae family. As the name suggests, Eleuthero, Siberian ginseng, grows in Eastern Eurasia and the Slavic states. It does share a lot of the same properties and medicinal effects as ginseng, but it has an even more calming and cooling vibe to it. It is particularly helpful with chronic anxiety because it helps your heart balance itself and not have all these crazy palpitations and just calms you down and helps you not have nightmares and just be a cooler and more collected person. That is the vibe of Eleuthero. Eleuthero also directly benefits your adrenal function and has a balancing effect on the adrenal cortex. Chronic stress can really impact this gland in particular and Eleuthero can give it the molecular information it needs to calm down and do its job properly. Eleuthero is also useful for athlete types and students because it increases blood circulation, which can both increase blood flow to the brain, heal chronic pain, and improve athletic performance. In high enough amounts, Eleuthero will even stimulate adrenaline production. The last plant we are going to talk about is Devil's Club, which is the plant of my homeland, basically. I live in the Pacific Northwest, and a healthy forest out here will likely have at least one Devil's Club stand in it. And it is a nasty, nasty plant. And if you get poked by one of Devil's Club's numerous spikes, then you could get a nasty bacterial infection. The root of the Devil's Club is very medicinal and such a powerful, helpful tonic adaptogen that it makes all the unpleasantness of its above ground self totally worth putting some gloves on and harvesting it. Now, Devil's Club is a threatened species in certain areas. Like any herb, especially threatened herbs, harvest very responsibly and only harvest what you need, just a little bit. Devil's Club's Latin name is Oplopanax horridus, which means horrible ginseng-like plant. And it does look sort of like ginseng. If ginseng were six feet tall and covered in devilish spikes, and I have heard it said that the native tribes in the Salish area regard it as having a warrior spirit because it is as tall as a full-grown man. Like all these other tonic herbs that I have covered, it does a lot of the same things. It increases your strength, it boosts your immune system, it improves your memory and focus. It is an all-around good-for-you plant. Devil's club root in particular is helpful for balancing blood sugar levels and preventing overly high blood sugar. Therefore, it has also been used as a healthy weight loss aid and healing GI tract issues. Because Devil's Club grows in the swamp, it has an affinity for treating swamp-like fungal infections like dandruff and skin infections and also helps get rid of phlegm from your system and is really helpful in fighting respiratory viruses. Devil's Club was traditionally used by the Salish Native Americans to aid in childbirth and ease menstrual pain. One of Devil's Club's best uses is its treatment of chronic back and neck pain. An herb like Devil's Club can increase circulation to your joints and help flush out the old blood and joint fluid and make new joint juice and blood and prevent your pain in that way. It's a very nourishing and holistic way to prevent pain. I am a holistic healer. It's a calling. It's a gift. Well, this was a bit of a rambling video, but thank you for sticking with me. There are so many amazing tonic herbs all over the world. I don't have time to talk about all of them. These are just five that I know pretty well, that I have used, and that I have seen benefit lots of people. So, I hope you enjoyed this, and I love y'all, and I will see you next week. Bye!